It's, it's a pleasure to be here uh, in the US. Um, you know, this session now, the next 40, 45 minutes, will be primarily be about what's new at Wikitude, what has happened the previous year, what's going to happen in the next few months, and so on. Um, and uh, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, my name is Philip Nagele. I'm the CTO of the company Wikitude. Um, we're all based out of uh, Salzburg, Austria. Um, and I do have a background in computer system engineering and uh, used to work for some other companies. Uh, one of them was very sign incorporated and I had the joy to live in Boston you know, at the East Coast for some time. So if you think uh, there is some East Coast, West Coast thing, that's probably because of that. So for today, um, I kind of structured it in a way that we have a short look back from 2016 to today and then a short look ahead. And then I have some time for Q&A um, planned. So you're entirely free to ask questions either directly or through Slido, uh, which, is, which could be fun. Let's see. A little bit background on Wikitude, um, the company, uh, because there have, some, have been some huge misconceptions about the company. I mean, the Wikitude company, the Wikitude app, used to be the first AR app in the mobile space. Um, our founder had this idea of viewing um, geo content in a camera and realized that with uh, one of the first phones out there and then one um, uh, was, was awarded under the top 50 for the Android Developer Challenge back 2008 and that was the kick, the starting point for the company Wikitude. Currently, the Wikidoot SDK is powering more than 20,000 app out, apps out in the market, um, and uh, you know, and out of those 20,000, we reach about 1 million installs um, through the Wikidoot SDK. As I said, we are based in the lovely town of Salzburg, uh, directly in the center of Europe, and um, usually Salzburg is well known for three things. One of them is sound of music. I'm quite sure a lot of you uh, know that. Fun fact is that in Austria, literally no one knows the movie. I think here it's super common, uh, but in Austria, if you tell Sound of Music and what is it, they're like, what? <laughs> the second thing Salzburg is famous for is Mozart. It's the birthplace of Mozart. And you know, literally in Salzburg, there's a Mozart liquor, Mozart Square, Mozart everywhere. And uh, abroad, with me, one of those Mozart Kugeln. Um, it's a sweet and marzipan and nougat. So, if actually Google would have called marshmallow marzipan, this would be the perfect uh, Android suite. Um, and I do have a few questions in my presentation, and um, the one who's answering that correctly is awarded with a Mozart Kugel. Mozart Kugel, not a fun fact, the literal translation of that would be Mozart balls. <laughs> Um, but um, as I have more than I have questions, I would say everyone who's uh, submitting a Slido question also would get one of those. And that brings me actually already to the first question. I said there are three things that Salzburg normally is well known for. Um, who has an idea, and all Austrians in the room are exempted from that, um, who has an idea uh, which building is that? Correct. Uh, that's the headquarter of Red Bull. How do you know? I took a sound and music tour. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I should. <laughs> I'll, I'll come up with you. Okay. <laughs> There's all. <laughs> So that's the third thing Salzburg is well known for, Red Bull. Um, and I think most people don't know that uh, the Red Bull headquarter is just uh, 20 kilometers uh, east to Salzburg. And that's the, the headquarter building. So it's not the boss's building, but it's the headquarter uh, in Fuschl. Very nice place. As you see, all of that is integrated. And of course, the fourth thing well known for Salzburg is Wikitude. Um, but you know, back to Wikitude, as I said, um, Wikitude quite often we faced with a misconception that Wikitude is a great app and an AR app, um, well known for geocontent. That is true, it has been true for the, for, for the first three years of uh, the company, and the company has been founded in 2008. 
Um, in the past five years, we've been solely working on the Wikidoot SDK and trying to enable developers, AR developers, um, to build AR experiences. And I hope that this misconception, you know, gets less and less and less as we grow further in time. But the key thing for Wikitude and what we offer is the Wikidoot SDK. We also offer an authoring tool that is called Wikidoot Studio and uh, a hosting service or cloud service uh, for our cloud recognition. Today I will primarily speak about the Wikidoot SDK and also some of the other components. For you as a developer, because we are in the developer track, right, um, I think access to the DSDK is one of the key aspects. And Wikitude has been building several access options for the Wikidoot SDK. And I'll show you that in, in, in the latest slide in a little bit more detail. Um, but just for remembering now at the moment, there are two ways how you can work with the Wikidoot SDK in essence. Uh, you either take the native API, which is a wrapper around our CV engine, or you work with the JavaScript API to create AR experiences. There are some differences in that, uh, come to that later, but that's kind of what we currently offer um, for AR developers. The Wikidoot SDK is based on an agnostic C++ core and uh, works with variables, uh, smart glasses on smartphone tablets uh, of Android and iOS. Kind of the usual smart glasses that are supported by the Wikidoot SDK, the ODG glasses, Vuzix. Um, we used to have also a Google Glass, but I guess it's not that relevant anymore. Um, and of course, uh, Epson also, um, Epson glasses are also supported uh, to run on the Wikidoot SDK. We currently reach about more than 100,000 developers in, from our ecosystem uh, with the Wicked SDK. Uh, and as I said, currently the install base is about 20,000 apps that, are, that have Wicked technology included and uh, in total reach 1 billion uh, app installs. So second question uh, from my Mozart Kugel quiz. Um, this device is quite iconic for us because it was the first device we've been working with. Who knows which device that is? You're the first. I just, I just like to, would like to know who knows that. How many people know what, whose device that is? One, two, three. G1? It's a T-Mobile G1. Yeah. <laughs> who, who was, who was second? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excellent. Applause for the gentleman. Uh, the T-Mobile G1, exactly. It's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm doing this now for three years. I'm asking this particular question. Um, and I really think it's really interesting because this is the first Android phone, right? If I would have put up the iPhone 3 um, G, everyone would have known this is the iPhone 3, the first iPhone phone, or the first iOS phone. Hardly people know that this is the first Android phone that really changed the market. I mean, I don't know whether there's a bigger lesson to learn from that. Um, I mean, Android is dominating the market share with what? 88% or so, um, but people just don't know that. Um, another fun fact, if you look very, very closely, uh, there's a little palm tree uh, on the screen, and that was the first icon of the Wikidoot app. Um, uh, this, was one part, uh, this was part of the award from the developer challenge that Wikidoot was pre-installed on this very first, uh, first phone. So for us, this phone is really, has been you know, kind of the, the thing that made Wikidoot uh, come to life. The reason for that is, this phone carried all the sensors necessary to do GOAR um, um, uh, on, on a mobile phone, a gyroscope, a accelerometer, a GPS, and a compass. No gyroscope at that time, but um, accelerometers. Um, so this was really the beginning of Wikitude. Um, as we are in the develop track, I'd like to introduce you quickly to the Wikitude SDK architecture. So it gives you an idea how the SDK is structured, um, what abilities you have, what it can do, and we'll go deep a little bit. As I said, um, iOS and Android, that is our current base. Um, and the SDK comes with a, a hardware layer that, let's just take it off, that wraps all the access to the hardware of the mobile phone. IMU access, camera access. Um, we do have several optimization layers in there for RMV7, RMV8, for Intel. 64-bit, 32-bit, uh, um, and the GPU optimization part as well. That is kind of transparent to you. You would not see that any, anyhow, just uh, you would see that the code itself behaves, behaves quite fast and performant. 
On top of that sits uh, a number of core components, basically a rendering component or rendering uh, the camera stream through OpenGL and Metal. And then the core part includes two computer vision engines, a SLAM engine and a 2D engine um, called image recognition uh, tracking engine here, a hook into our cloud uh, recognition service and a plugin manager that we'll see what uh, does that afterwards. And that is kind of already the package that you can see or can use in the native API. So we have Java and Objective-C uh, APIs to access all that functionality. And that is what we call the native API. So you can build your app on top of that and work with uh, the APIs to access the functionality there. The same is true for Unity. Um, there's a Unity plugin coming from Wikitude that kind of abstracts uh, that part and includes the native API does some more in the Unity editor, um, but the base is kind of the same. Next to that is the JavaScript API, and there's some intentionally space left. Um, you can build an app also on base of a JavaScript API in case you don't want to do all the rendering, all the stuff, and want to uh, work on the Java or Objective-C. You can work a common interface through JavaScript, very much like Facebook announced um, uh, a month ago, we've been doing this like for five years. Um, but there's more to the JavaScript API. And the JavaScript API has an own 3D rendering engine included, uh, mobile optimized 3D rendering engine, plus uh, you can define and work with augmentations like video drawables, image drawables, that kind of stuff that makes an AR experience an AR experience. They're predefined in there, plus it has this location-based the GeoAR part in there. So if you want to visualize points of interest, if you want to visualize a radar element, things like that, um, you would do that. Um, anything, that Pokemon Do, anything that Pokemon Go did, you could do in the, with the Wicked SDK out of the box. Um, if you're interested in going that route, there's even a, a very extensive tutorial on the Wicked side how to build a Pokemon Go style app uh, with the Wicked SDK. And then there are some more additions how you could work with that. If you are working with PhoneGap in Cordova, there is a Cordova plugin to work with. If you're working with Excel, uh, Accelerator fla uh, Framework, there's a Titanium module for you. If you're working with Xamarin um, on C Sharp and Windows, there's a Xamarin plugin to work with the Wicked SDK, readily supported from Wikitude. And then there is uh, this plugin manager and the plugins API. Um, the plugins API is, I think, a very interesting addition to the Wikidata SDK because it allows you as a developer to kind of run code in parallel to the Wikidata SDK. The idea is that the Wikidata SDK is sharing the camera information with a plugin that you can register and write on your own. Um, and then you can manipulate kind of what the user is seeing. Um, that is quite helpful if you want to provide your own camera frame, if you want to reuse um, if you have an own engine that you want to use for tracking, if you want to create an own tracker that is not supported natively from the Wikidata SDK, um, if you want to do some special rendering, that is where the plugins API comes in handy. The C++ part that obviously is optional and um, normally only for advanced users, but you can do some pretty nifty stuff with that. As one example, I would just briefly uh, skim through the JavaScript API um, because it's kind of special for the Wikidude, uh, for Wikidude and I think we're the only AR SDK that allows you to work with JavaScript instead of any native code. The Java API to work with is quite slim. Um, what we, call, we usually call the JavaScript API, we used to call it the architect view. Uh, so any reference to architect means basically the JavaScript API. And the Java part of that is super slim. So if you integrate that at, uh, in your Android application, the Java part you have to do is really, really slim. It comes with the typical lifecycle events on create, on pause, on resume. Um, and what you basically do is you load an architect world. Very similar to like you would load a web page, you load an architect world. Um, everything else of that is, is really optional. Um, and how this looks like come from an architectural perspective, we do have an OpenGL and uh, ES2 or ES3 view in the background that is drawing all the 3D content that renders the camera stream. And on top of that is a web view, standard web view from Android and iOS with a transparent background that you can directly hook into. You basically can draw diff elements, anything. You can work with JavaScript. And the web view is basically executing this. Um, 
One of the samples in the weekly SDK that we deliver uh, with the SDK out of uh, more than 40 samples is what we call snap to screen. Um, so if you have a video running on one of the targets and you move away, the video would snap onto the phone and still play there. The container this video is snapping to is just a regular diff that you can position with X, Y, Z or whatever. Um, and it's just regular HTML that you kind of place that diff container um, to snap the video into. So this is kind of how, how this works. Any content that is not AR related is rendered through the web view. Every other content that we do is uh, rendered in this OpenGL view. Um, I said you usually load this kind of architect world um, like any other web page and the analogy is actually quite, quite close. An architect world consists of HTML files, JavaScript files, and CSS files. So like a regular web page, you basically do an AR experience uh, as, as a JavaScript or as a web project, if you'd like to say. Um, the only thing you need to do is kind of work with the SDK, plus you need to load our library um, through this tag. This looks like a standard URL. If you would type in this in your browser, you would probably get a 404. Um, because we inject that file during runtime um, from the SDK. Uh, not because the JavaScript uh, part is so sophisticated, but we just want to save the time of loading because you already anyhow have that offline and we inject that and it's a lot faster. Then we need to wait to load uh, for the library. And um, so, our C++ part and the JavaScript part, obviously they work very closely together. Whatever you do on the JavaScript side in, the, in, in our uh, API, that triggers then an action in the underlying C++ layer. So they continually, continuously communicating back and forth. What we offer in the, in the JavaScript API is, is, is quite a lot. I said uh, one part are the drawables, so the thing that the visualization of the AR experience is. Um, currently, you can do images, videos, 3D models through the JavaScript API, um, web views, um, and labels. Um, and as you see, we're using the AR namespace, so you will interact with the API through AR dot and whatever you want to do then, uh, whichever, whichever object you want to do. From a software architecture point of view, this is kind of like an MVC um, pattern. Um, we do have the models, we have views, and we have controllers to control that. And that is quite consistent uh, through the entire API. Just one sample um, uh, how this can, can look like. Um, the idea here is we want to uh, augment this catalog page of a kitchen with a video of the kitchen. Um, what you would do is you would define an AR target collection object or AR target collection resource. That is the image you want to uh, track. Uh, then you define an image tracker because we want to track an image. Um, we define an overlay, which is in this case a video overlay, a video drawable um, with a local file called Houdens MP4. Um, the parameter there is a size parameter, so 65% uh, width. Um, and then we put all together in this trackable 2D object, which is an image trackable, assigned drawables, and that's it. That's kind of the code to make this augmentation run in the Wikidit SDK and the JavaScript API. So quite slim, uh, I think easy to understand and easy to follow. But as I said, I want to talk a little bit about the past and then also about the future. Um, what kind of wikitude is, what we strive for when we develop the Wikid SDK is kind of this triangle uh, between developer usability, sensing, and rendering. So what do I mean with sensing and rendering and developer usability? Sensing, I mean um, anything that is kind of related to computer vision algorithms uh, or being able to sense the surrounding, right? Um, any AR SDK needs to have the capability to understand what's around there um, in some sort of form, right? Either not so sophisticated when we talk about GAR, we're just evaluating a compass, the GPS position, and the accelerometer to know where you're looking at. So we don't really understand the environment, we just have a guess where you're looking at and we're um, showing content there. With image recognition, we already know we're looking at, um, and that extends, um, you know, you can do um, sensing of the environment depth to create some occlusion. The second part, rendering, obviously, is, you know, um, a good AR experience, you hardly can tell the difference between the real object and the virtual object. Uh, for that happen, um, if you currently look at nearly every AR SDK, if you render in a 3D model, you easily can spot, oh yeah, this is the 3D model of my, of my chair. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of things to do, right? Dynamic lighting, dynamic cast, uh, shadow casting. Um, what is the main light source? Shadow is one of the most important effects or parts in making something looking real. Um, and that is something no one else, uh, no one is currently doing, <laughs> us included. So um, there's a big part we're looking towards rendering to make that more realistic. Um, but you know, no tool is really successful if you have, if you can't use it. Um, so a big portion of our effort in development is really into developer usability. Design APIs that make sense. Design APIs that are consistent throughout uh, the entire set of APIs we have. Samples, as I said, the SDK comes with more than 40 samples included. Um, documentation where we explain step by step how the concepts work. Um, those are the, this is the triangle the Wikidata SDK is currently working with. And um, as I said, what this, this session here today is about you know, what's new in Wikitude. Um, and when I looked back and I had the chance to look back at what happened since the latest, uh, last AWE when I was standing here, um, and actually it's quite a lot. Um, we had six releases of the Wikidata SDK in the past year, four of them major feature releases, two maintenance and stability releases. We launched an entire new Wikidata Studio editor. We came out with that um, 2012 and last year. We redid, the, uh, we, did, we redid the entire Studio editor to set it up on an entirely new technology base. The Unity plugin and editor, uh, not the editor, the parts for the Unity editor are entirely new um, and reamped. Um, and the support platform that we launched for you developers to give you a better support to kind of help the community solve problems that you might encounter is also entirely new. Um, looking at the sensing part, um, which kind of correlates to computer vision uh, improvements and algorithms. Um, we introduced a SLAM engine, a 3D SLAM engine, into the Wikidata SDK beginning of this year. Um, for the start, this is what we call the instant tracking um, tracker. So you can instantaneously track the scene and place objects. I'm going to show you afterwards. Um, together with that, the um, performance of what we call the extended tracking uh, dramatically improved as well. Uh, difference between instant tracking and extended tracking is just where I kind of start off. Instant tracking, I don't start off anything known, I just start off an unknown territory. With extended tracking, I'm starting off with an image and then building my SLAM map around that dynamically. Uh, but we've always been investing a lot in the 2D image tracking and the 2D uh, computer vision engine. Um, we saw that there is some potential in that um, and with one of the past releases in the past year, uh, we particularly worked on uh, recognition accuracy. Um, so this means like how many images do we get right out of a certain set of images. Um, before the changes, we were somewhere in the mid 80s um, out of 100 from a, a standardized set. With the changes, we're constantly over 92 to 94 percent that we uh, correctly assign the images from the tracker that you give us. Um, Improved tracking stability and accuracy is something you're going to see in a second uh, because, you know, when talking about it, uh, augmented reality, it's just a lot easier to show videos because, as I said, seeing is believing. And uh, we also reduced uh, tracking chitter just to make the uh, experience a lot more stable. So here we go. Yep. So what we show is, is a comparison video between the previous SDK and uh, the other S or the newest SDK. Um, this is directly from the phone. No editing. Obviously, when, once we have a green frame, we can classify and register the image. Um, it's a single light source here um, with some objects that are placed intentionally to disturb the scene, um, a glass. Um, other objects casting shadows uh, that are just partially visible. The movements are real time, so this is not double speed, this is real time. Um, and uh, I think the engine is doing quite well in recognizing those images. And the second change was like, oops. was on tracking uh, chittering uh, or tracking stability, particularly if you were not moving a lot, you could see the augmentation chittering a little. If you look closely on the tower, there's a little chitter on that. Um, with the changes on SDK 6, there's nearly no chitter at all, just stable um, image tracking um, 
which obviously helps to increase the reality aspect of uh, augmented reality. I said we launched a, a SLAM engine included in the Wikidea SDK that is a monocular visual SLAM. Um, we're using purely the vision uh, part of that. Um, and what that helps is, or what, what we put out as a product is called instant tracking. I'm going to show you a quick video, one of my colleagues um, doing this. It works quite well indoor and outdoor. So the um, the scenery, all right, we're, we're back to Salzburg again, right? Um, Salzburg in winter. Um, so this is also unedited. This is uh, capturing directly from the application. Um, obviously, indoor use cases could be placing furniture, um, looking at the furniture. We do kind of a guesstimate of the real size, um, depending on where you're starting. Um, that's extended tracking. So my colleague was starting off uh, an image mark on top and then going down. Uh, while that doing, we're building uh, the map. So that kind of concludes the sensing part, I said, you know, uh, out of those three. Um, the second part is developer usability, which is kind of how we design the API, what we deliver to you to enable uh, AR experiences. And we did quite a lot on that aspect. Um, we re the plugins API and come to that in a second. Um, we redesigned entirely our tracker interfaces and renamed them um, to be more consistent. Um, there were many rendering and camera improvements and we brought also multi-touch gestures to the JavaScript API. The thing you saw when manipulating the table uh, directly on the screen, that is happening all in JavaScript. Um, the plugins API, as I said, is something for advanced users, and I'm kind of guessing I'm, at, I'm talking to advanced users. Um, so as I said, the plugins API is a great way to extend the Wikidata SDK in several types. What we added uh, in the last year is a new form of plugin that we call input plugin, which is a little bit wrongly named, because it's, it kind of suggests that you just can input things to the Wikidata SDK. Actually, it's also an output, so it should be I.O. plugin. But never mind. Um, input plugins, the idea is you provide the Wicked SDK a camera frame, wherever that comes from. This can be your implementation of camera access. This could be a camera or an image frame from a remote camera. Kind of, we don't care. Um, we have a standard frame provider that is capturing the images, um, or you can provide this custom frame provider from wherever. It just needs to be image data, whether it comes from a video, from a live camera, from a remote camera. The Wicked SDK kind of don't care. Plus, there's a second, um, as I said, it's also a kind of output uh, way you can um, uh, basically override the update loop and the rendering loop and take care of the rendering on your own. So what do you see in this little animation down there? Uh, down there this is a custom shader that we implemented on top of our standard frame provider. So if you want to do rendering or rendering effects on your own, this is a uh, possibility to go the route. Plus, there was another addition, positionables, which I think is kind of interesting. So if you build your own tracker, if you, if you do recognition for a certain thing on your own, and you want to reuse the JavaScript API, our augmentation, so you want to do video drawables, image drawables, and so on, uh, you can do that. You can provide your own pose information, tracking information, and you just use our rendering uh, engine kind of on top of that. The tracker changes, I think they're not like super spectacular, but quite helpful. Um, we used to have client and cloud trackers, and with the addition of the instant tracker, that really didn't work. So we re redesigned them and renamed them. Um, you now have image tracker um, as the universal tracker that can have several uh, options. So you can either load an, a collection from offline, from local device, that is then the standard client tracker, or you provide a, an access key to our service that is then the cloud tracker. Um, so I think quite, quite straightforward. Multi-touch gestures in the JavaScript API allow you to manipulate content in any kind of way. Before that, it was just like you could click and uh, interact with the augmentation. With this, it, the types of interactions are like, I wouldn't say endless, but it's kind of a standard uh, what you expect also from an experience or what you also get from other engines. So pan, rotate, pinch to zoom, those gestures uh, are available uh, in the Wikidata SDK in the JavaScript API. You kind of react on that through a callback um, that you can catch and then work it. Works all real time, um, uh, which was one of the not so easy parts to get in the JavaScript uh, area. 
When it comes to rendering, and that is then the, 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 the third part uh, in our circles, um, the Wikid SDK now can work with the Camera 2 API uh, from Android, which is a great idea, right? Um, evolving camera access, more fine-grained control. Uh, the thing is, the implementations vary so differently from different OEMs um, that there's no real consistent pattern in how to access it. So when you use the Camera 2 API through the Wikid SDK, you can choose basically to still work with the legacy API or the Camera 2 API. It still might not work on all phones. I mean, I think nominally we're like 70, 80 uh, percent that should support that from the Android ecosystem, um, but the truth looks a lot, lot, lot different. Um, if you want to use um, features from OpenGL or Metal on, uh, on your own, you can do this with the Wikidot SDK in the native API. Um, if like rendering is, uh, you have some very advanced requirements on that, you can do this. Um, and what the Camera 2 API gives us the ability is to uh, get a, or render a high definition frame. So um, since a few weeks or since a few months, you can use uh, a full HD frame uh, to capture um, the scene and also render that. It just looks a lot nicer. Um, here's the exact difference. Uh, like if you would zoom in in one of the displays, um, the lower part is what used to be uh, rendering quality. The upper one is like what it is now. That's a pretty detail, you know, and, and obviously it makes a difference uh, to your users, to your uh, customers, um, if I want to be able to read this or not. Smart glasses, um, you know, are also part of the AR ecosystem and Wikidude supports um, the most prominent uh, vendors. Um, we've done a little bit more than uh, just supporting glasses. Um, with one of the latest editions, there is a calibration process. Um, so you can calibrate the glasses to your personal needs. Um, as we're talking about an SDK, not an end consumer application here, um, we have white labeled this process. So if you have the need to show this process to your users, you can entirely white label that process. You can define the targets that you want to do, you can define the steps, that's entirely up to you. I'm quickly just jumping over to the Studio Editor. This is an entire new web application based on the mean stack, um, entire web browsed <coughs> application, an authoring tool. Uh, that integrates uh, with the target management application, so you, um, and comes with the usual drag and drop uh, placement um, and additions. Um, it's currently free, uh, and will stay free for uh, several aspects of that. I'd highly recommend to give it a try on the studio, studio.wikido.com. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple and, and quite effective. So that was kind of the past and looking back. Looking forward, to what's what's going to happen after um, this year or after today? Um, the next release of the Wikid SDK is around the corner. Um, we don't have yet a specific specific date, but it's not that far away. Uh, it will, based on the Slam engine that we built and released at the beginning of the year, uh, will put out the new feature that is called object recognition. So pre-recorded maps, um, you can pre-record maps based on a video um, of an object. Think of small sized objects, um, and with that, you can then re recognize and uh, track the object in whatever environment. I'm going to show you a sample afterwards. There will be more updates to the 2D computer vision engine, and um, obviously, the SLAM engine has evolved uh, since we launched it uh, in January. So, object recognition and tracking, and that is a photo um, of the demo we're going to show in our exhibition starting tomorrow. Um, uh, the ability to recognize and track this router machine. Um, the process is as following. The developer uploads a video of this router machine. We generate a point cloud out of that, which is then converted in what we call a map. This map, you can load that in your application and re-recognize this application every time. Um, so you here you have the equivalent of this fire truck to, uh, toy, um, the point cloud that you would then be able to work with. Um, I have a video here that sh not shows the fire truck, but a hydraulic pump. Um, so this, those are the kind of objects I'm talking about. Toys, machinery, um, anything that kind of fits in one and a half, two meters. Again, this is real time, um, monocular standard devices. So we're not talking about Tango, we're not talking about HoloLens. We're talking about standard uh, devices um, that, we, that the weekly SDK supports.
Um, but again, you know, we, we are still investing in the 2D engine <coughs> and um, have included uh, what we call image recognition extended range um, that boosts the recognition distance uh, of our existing solution. Um, you know, we've been done a few measurements and uh, with this change you will be able to recognize or classify images that are US letter size, so this is you know, standard US letter or uh, A4 paper size. Uh, from 2.5 meters, uh, which is equivalent of eight feet. Um, so you can recognize that image from 2.4 uh, meters. Um, when we talk about tracking, um, so how, how far can I go back to still have the image uh, tracked, this is somewhere in the range of 18 feet to 5.5 meters. Plus what we're adding is the ability to track several images at the very same time. Um, so we're not limiting uh, the amount of images you can track at the same time, this is basically a uh, limitation of the device or the processing power of the device. We can detect multiple targets, uh, multiple and duplicate targets, so duplicates of the same. And the API gives you some clues where, how far, they, this, uh, how far the images are apart and how they're oriented towards each other. Um, I said 18 feet, 5.5 meter, just to give you kind of a, a real world example of what that means. Um, we're kind of tracking this image next to the TV. And then if you zoom in kind of to get what we're talking, this is kind of this pixel something uh, that the engine can still track. When it comes to the SLAM engine, um, we uh, started with, uh, I think, a very decent performance on 64-bit devices. We're going down now to uh, include a better performance on 32-bit uh, uh, devices as well. Um, that also means a higher accuracy on tracking and mapping, so you will see um, quite many improvements in this area as well. Um, I think what becomes quite, what could become quite handy for developers is that you can query the depth for each scene coordinate. So if you want to know what the current depth value for the XY coordinate is, uh, there's an API to do that. Um, so, so you can place dynamically augmentations um, at the correct depth. Um, and there's a small addition to the instant tracking. Um, well, what we do in the instant tracking is that we kind of assume a certain ground plane and then start tracking out of that. Um, you will have the ability to set the ground plane, whether this is uh, vertical, horizontal, or whatever. Um, so um, instant tracking then kind of evolves also that you can place uh, pictures or whatever is on, on, on the wall. That kind of summarizes what you know has happened in since May 2016, June 2016, and it's going to happen in the next few weeks. Um, most of the things uh, that are going to happen, you can sh um, see them at our booth um, at uh, 634, uh, starting tomorrow. We'll have an implement. All right, we have a demo of multiple targets. You will see object recognition there, um, and a few other things. So, if you're interested and want to see what's happening, you're all welcome and happily invited. Thanks for your attention. You were an awesome audience. Um, I still have some Mozart Kugel left, so let's see, let's see um, what the questions on Slido are. Okay. So the first question: How do you properly set the scale of virtual objects using instant tracking? Who's, who, 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 who submitted that question? Motorkugel? <laughs> I think we can do this. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, the answer is, um, as I said, we're kind of guesstimating that. Um, as a developer, you have the ability to uh, set the, the initial device height, um, so you can set where the where kind of the user is starting. If we have this value, we then calculate the entire absolute scale of the scene. That's the idea behind it. There's a default value, which I think is 1.6 meter or so, uh, but you're entirely free to set that value as you like. Another question, what are the main advantages of Wikidot over Euphoria? That's an interesting question, and I get that over and over and over again. Um, maybe whoever whoever's, uh, had that question uh, probably passed by the booth and we talk in more detail what the advantages and the differences are. Uh, I think you saw some of them. Um, JavaScript API is one of the key aspects, I think, um, and that there is some rendering included. Next question, do you plan to support Windows, Windows Universal Platform or HoloLens in the near future? Who, 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 who had that question? Uh, 
There's one. Another one. Ah. One, two, three. Ah. Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, the answer is yes and no. Um, if you look at our website very closely, we find some cues. Uh, what are we kind of up for? Um, probably the near is the one where I'd say no, but um, some of those things are definitely on, 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 the, on, the, on the roadmap. Does your SDK allow for image and instant tracking simultaneously? For example, use image tracking to calibrate a scene, then use instant tracking. Who did that? Very good question. Ah, okay. Oh, that's a long shot. <laughs> One, that's exactly against the yeah. One, two, three, up. Ooh. <laughs> um, in a certain way, yes, that's what we call extended tracking. You start off an image and then the map is building. Uh, what the SDK currently does not allow for is that you start with instant tracking and then have an Im image at the same time. Um, but there are kind of, the, inst the extended tracking is the way to go. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. I have five more. I don't know how much time I have. None? One, one two more questions. Two more questions, okay. Um, are, there, are there apps released that use Wikidu 3D Slam? Is there a demo app that we could download and try like the UFO? Yes. Huh. <laughs> One, two, three. Um, um, have a look at the Sadoc app. That is a, uh, a furniture placing app. Um, I think that is one of the better implementations so far, Sadoc. And the second and last question, do you guys support additional rendering APIs or do you have to write raw OpenGL metal code when rendering in AR? Who, who, who's, whose question is that? No? No? Um, as I said, kind of you have the possibility to include Wikidu through the native API, then rendering is entirely on your own. So then you need to have some rendering engine, you need to write OpenGL code, metal code as you like. If you go to JavaScript API, you don't have to care about any of the, of the rendering APIs. You just write JavaScript code and rendering will happen for you. Um, so you kind of have both options, whatever you want to go. Either go native and choose your own rendering engine, but then I think you have to, you have to need to know what you do or you go JavaScript API and have the convenience of a fairly simple API. Is there a native script component available for Wikisuit? No. How accurate is the guesstimate for scale? Depends very much on how accurate the, the initial value is, I would say. Awesome. Well, a big <laughs> round of applause for Philip. You get